Hi, everyone. This is Ed Mabry with faithbyreason.net. Hi, Ed, and all this is uh, Pastor Jerry Gerardo with Lighthouse Christian Church here in Novato. How are you doing, Pastor? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, doing well. Had a real, you know, every week's different. Last week was really challenging on so many fronts. And uh, in fact, some pressure at work and some other things that, you know, we got through it all. But it was interesting that everything kind of escalated this last week at a time when I was preparing a message addressing discouragement. And I've noticed as I prepare messages, there are times when God says, you know, I got you in scripture, which is good, but I'm going to give you a fresh dose yeah. of what you need to preach on. So there's a reality to it and uh, an application to it. So I, I actually recognized uh, partway into the week with these extra challenges. Wait a minute. The Lord is up to something here to remind me of really important insights that I need to apply in my life, but also can share on Sunday morning. Yeah, you know, God is really great at teaching us with knowledge and with experience. He will tell us, the <laughs> don't have us live it out in a practical way, whether we like it or not. Sometimes I, I am a witness to that. I get yeah. the same stuff where I hear from God and he says, just in case you didn't know it was me, now I'm going to bring it to you in real life. So, right, right. Uh, yeah. So you so, talk so, about so, so for me, oh, yeah, I, I, I learned. I learned a while ago, be, you know, be careful what you preach on or teach on because God will. <laughs> that is a very good point. That's another reason why you need to be very careful if you're a teacher. I know that because I'm a teacher as well. And we're yeah. held, we're held highly accountable, but great reward and, and also great risk of God we really wanting to make sure that we have, that we understand what we're going to get from him. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So last week you started with the first deadly D, which was deception, Satan deceiving us, our spiritual right. enemy, just misrepresenting things and, and deceiving us. And so when he can't deceive us, when we overcome deception and we're, and we're on the right track, I think his next weapon is to discourage us. So, oh, you want to go that way? I'm going to make sure that that I'm going to do everything I can to prevent you from doing that by discouraging you. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about that discouragement and what, what the Bible says about it? Ab absolutely. No, thanks, Ed. I really appreciate that. Great question. And, and in fact, we all deal with discouragement throughout our lives. Every human being is going to face challenges on a daily, weekly basis. Some of them are kind of fleeting. I'm kind of discouraged in a moment or with the situation. Some of them can, uh, some can plague us for an extended season. If we have a season of extended illness or real, real impacts in our lives that don't just impact us for the moment, but over time, that can even become more discouraging, right? But it is a weapon that Satan uses because he wants to bring us down. We talked about that with deceit. He wants to deceive us to keep, so that we don't understand the truth of who Christ is and how God created us and the fact that we are overcomers in Christ. Well, like you're saying, even if we understand his, his uh, weapons of deceit, He's got these other weapons and discouragement is a big one and that we all have to contend with. And the Lord knows that. And that's why throughout scripture, you will find such precious verses about lifting people up and encouraging one another. And God does that with us every day. See, the great news in every one of these messages about the deadly deeds is even though Satan has his weapons. And as human beings in our frailty and in our, you know, living in a fallen world, we'll be subject to that. Christ has overcome it all on the cross. The Holy Spirit living within us can help us to rise above and come out of a place of discouragement to be encouraged, which is really just adding courage to your life. God, give me courage. Discouragement means that the courage has gone away. I'm rocked back. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm discouraged. I'm down. But the Lord is so good that he knows us and he knows that we will have those moments and even those seasons, but he doesn't leave us. And there's so many examples in scripture, the prophet Elijah, after doing remarkable things, defeating all these prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and this incredible mountain, literally mountaintop experience in the next moment, he is more than discouraged. He's depressed. He's on the run. Uh, you know, apparently for his life with Queen Jezebel just trying to kill him. And God has to come and minister to this great prophet who had just done these incredible things in the power of the Lord. In the next moment, he's discouraged. So this is part of our humanity. And we deal with this. We all do. You know what I like about that is that 
another way that we can be discouraged, just like you said with Elijah, we can have a victory and then we get down and Satan is like, was that really your victory? Or are you really yeah. sure? How much does God have to do for you, to, for you to finally get it? And we beat ourselves up. I do that myself a lot of times where, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a straight line up getting to right, really right. Much. It, it, it's, it goes like this you're, you're it's like the stock market sort of stock market ticker you're kind of going up but down and up and i get hard get down on myself when i'll start doubting and and then i'll think well you know you know god did this great thing for me in the past why am i doubting him and then satan jumps on that and say yes see you're god you don't deserve god's goodness because every time god does something good for you then you start to doubt it and you doubt him you should just forget about it you're no good you're never going to be as good as, right. as, as you want to be so or, or as good as God wants you to be. And it's like, well, right. then, should I even try? So it, then, so, so give us, if you want to talk more yeah. about that, that'd be great. Please do. Yeah, no, no. It just triggered another thought because yeah. even in what you were sharing, Satan's going to continue to whisper in our ear and it's going to be filled with lies and deceit, which we talked about the week before, but the purpose of it is to destroy and bring down. So it is that deceit will be discouragement. You'll never be this, or you can't do that, or, you know, God's really pretty far away from you, my friend. If, you know, even if Satan will concede that we believe in God and say, okay, I, I can't persuade him that God doesn't exist. So I'll just try to persuade him that God just is paying attention to everybody else and not caring about my situation. Flat out lies from the pit of hell. God, time and again in scripture and with the life of Jesus tells us, I am so invested in your life. I've given my son and he's laid down his life willingly so that I can be a part of your life. I can live within you through the power of the Holy Spirit and guide you and comfort you and lift you up time and again. So he knows there's so many great verses in scripture about how he ministers to the brokenhearted. So if somebody's down, the last thing we want to do is to kick them and say, hey, you got to get up. You know, I mean, what we want to communicate is the truth, which is, you know, something God sees this. He sees where you're at. He he's right there with you. He won't abandon you. He won't even stay at arm's length. He'll want to come and give you a hug. That's the metaphor and the graphic that I have in my mind is God wants to come and give us a hug when we're going through those really tough things. And then with that, to remind us he's right there. He's given us every ability. Philippians 4, 19 says, and we, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's just an all encompassing, whatever your need is. And it might just be a need to be encouraged for the moment, but it might be something else. Also, God is going to supply that to you. Last week for me, in the midst of these battles where things were really pressing in and I'm starting to say, okay, I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting, come on, this is not working the way it's supposed to. And at the very same time, God's sharing scripture with me, helping me to process things and bringing others into my life who are already a part of it. My family, uh, others who will give me encouragement and counsel, just like I want to be there for them. And I am there for them. So different phone calls last week, just on other matters that turned out to be just a huge encouragement to me. So God is always going to provide us with the encouragement we need, but we have to look to him. We have to embrace that. And then we have to believe what he's telling us, which is he's overcome this. We can lay the burdens with him and he can help us to walk through to do what? To bring glory to Christ and to build a greater testimony. See, and I, I've reflected, and I know you do, we reflect on our own lives. And I have to say that in a person's life, and I know this to be the case in mine, some of the greatest victories and testimonies for Christ are actually how I deal with discouragement. Sure. If I just give into it, it's not the testimony I want to have. If I trust in Christ and grow in my trust in Christ through that experience, it actually is a great testimony of trust and obedience and faithfulness to God, knowing that he's completely faithful to me. So I think that when we look at our testimonies before the Lord, he's not just going to be looking down at the mountaintop experiences, you know, uh, he's going to be looking at how we respond the way Jesus responded right in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the, in the most difficult of circumstances that Jesus faced, he looked to the Lord, he looked to the Father, and he says, not my will, but thy will, and he embraced it, and he, he went to the Lord right away, he went to our Father right away, that's such a great model for us. So it sounds like what you're saying is that no matter how discouraged we get, 
God never gets discouraged with us. And I, and, and if that, I believe and, and it, that's, that's true. Yeah. I believe it is. And then that's so comforting that to know that no matter how down we get, God doesn't suffer. God does not suffer from discouragement. So he won't get, he won't right. stop believing in us no matter how much we doubt. And that's, that, that's beautiful. It, it's a, it's a great, it's a great point. He's, it, I'm, you know, reflecting on this, there is nothing that's a part of God that relates to discouragement. Yeah. He is not discouraged. He will not provide discouragement. He will bring the opposite. He's filled with courage and righteousness and love and all these under, unbelievably perfect attributes. And he wants to share all of those with us. And he does, including giving us courage, imparting courage to us right in the midst of the battle. Uh, yeah. Sounds great because courage is not, as I told my son um, the other day when he asked me what the definition of courage was, I said, courage is not, not being scared. Courage is being scared and still doing it. There you go. Absolutely. In our humanity, we're going to be fearful of many things. And Christ will remind us he's right there. He's already overcome it. And we can too, standing with him, trusting in him and stepping out at times to have and uh, that kind of courage and, and to demonstrate what he's provided to us. Well, Pastor Jerry, another fantastic message. It's, it just encouraged me. Good. So, yay, yay. So the, why don't you talk about uh, what you're going, what the upcoming message this Sunday is going to, to be about. Okay. So our, thank you. And that's great. Yeah. I mean, it's always mutually encouraging when we share the word of God. It's just yeah. the way his word operates in our lives. Uh, so uh, this next week, it's going to be the third deadly D of division. Ooh. See, Satan's going to bring deceit. He's going to bring discouragement and he wants to divide. The house divided cannot stand. Jesus said that it's, you know, a kingdom that's divided cannot stand. And so Satan wants to bring division between people in, in a group, in any kind of context. He will seek division because he knows that can absolutely destroy what God wants to do, which is to produce unity through the spirit. So we'll be talking about that. Sounds great. Look forward to it. And I just want to encourage everyone <laughs> to, well said. I know that was a beautiful segue. Yeah. I want to encourage everyone to uh, please hit uh, the like button and the subscribe button here on YouTube so that you, we can elevate these, uh, these videos, more people can see them. Uh, please subscribe um, to, to this, to uh, this YouTube channel. You can, so you can get all of these videos when, when they are available and share it, please. And we will talk to you again uh, next week when we deal with the, and show you how to overcome that third deadly D of division. So Pastor Jerry, thank you again and just have a wonderful blessed day. All right, Ed, you too. Encouragement to you from God himself and also to everyone viewing. Love you, brother. Uh, blessings to all.